Set is going to tell us about khaki. Now, now Set, before you start, morning, morning. this topic sounding like something you could cook on a Sunday. So let me go. I'm going to get some khaki with my kalaloo. Yeah, go ahead. Actually, when you think about it, um, it's something that people do cook a lot that um, actually causes khaki. So khaki is actually um, another name for berry berry. So berry berry disease was a very prevalent disease in the late, well, it was most prevalent in the late 1800s and early 1900s yeah. in countries like Japan and the, the um, Eastern Asian countries. So um, khaki or berry berry, so the word berry berry comes from a, a Sinhalese um, word which means extreme weakness. So remember we're dealing with the topics of, uh, of vitamins, huh? So yeah. uh, let me get um, permission to share the screen. Sure. So because I want to share the screen so that we can see um we, you have permission to share the screen? No, not yet. Not we, yet. we need permission to share the screen, gentlemen. Permission to mash up the place here. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So as we see here. As the screen pop up here, you see at the top here, thiamine deficiency, also called berry berry. Uh huh. Right? So, this was a condition that was affecting a lot of people in the in the navy and in the general population of the Asian communities. Right. right. So it affected a lot of people. So as as the name means, extreme weakness. Now there are two types of berry berry. We have well, you could say three types. You have in adults, you have wet berry berry and you have dry berry berry. At the top here, we see in dry berry berry, where you see people are emaciated, mm. right? You see in um, loss of reflexes in the knees and feet, paresthesia, which means that uh, pins and tingling feeling in, in the feet, right? You have painful, tender muscles, numbness of the feet, yeah? Aphonia, which is basically you're losing your voice, you're losing the ability to speak, you have great weakness, your wrists start to drop, your foot start to drop, all right? You have, um, so dyspenia and um, atropenia, which is basically shortness of breath, and atropenia is when you have the shortness of breath when you're lying down, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that, that, so that's going into the category of wet, um, of wet berry berry, all right? You have dilation of the right heart, so in other words, you get congestive heart failure, all right uh, so you have Wernicke syndrome which is you you have the loss of control or, or weakness in the eye muscles so your eyes moving about uncontrollably confusion coma you have death have edema all these conditions are associated with um, congestive heart failure so both wet and dry berry berry you know this used to happen a lot to people that were in the the Navy as well so that's where um, a particular doctor in japan so this particular doctor by the name of uh kanehiro takaki right uh -huh. kanehiro takaki he was um you know a physician in the navy and he observed that this condition affected the uh when it comes to the rank of officers the lower ranks and prisoners the most so mostly prisoners then as the rank goes up it affected them at lower percentages, right? Right. So what he realized was that, and then when he looked at society as well, the people in society that was affected the most were the lower class and the upper class were least affected, all right? The percentage of people in the upper class were least affected. So just by his observation, he realized mm -hmm. this has to be something dealing with your nutrition. Okay, makes so sense. So around in the... In the early um, 1880s uh, he started to make some observations and some suggested changes to the rations that they were consuming uh, back then all right so the rations that they were consuming back then so let me close the screen here so what he observed was the diets the diets of people now what I, what I want to draw reference to and show is that he didn't need to know about these conditions because berry berry um you, you know they like i said it was just extreme weakness but they didn't have they didn't know it was a, a vitamin b1 which is timing deficiency right. right 
but he just observed they probably wasn't eating right. His observation was simply there wasn't enough protein in the diet. Okay. The actual cause of the vast expanse of beriberi disease in the past was due to, guess what? The consumption of rice. Rice? So, rice, yeah. Okay. So what you mentioned earlier, people might eat, pake might be something people might be eating on a Sunday. It kind of goes in hand in hand because a lot of people eat rice. Yeah. So refined rice, which is white rice, is deficient in vitamin B1 timing, right? But, you know, I am pretty sure, I'm pretty sure most of the viewers didn't know that or don't know that. Mm. They now know it, all right? So it was quite deficient. And, you know, in the Asian cultures, eating a bowl of rice alone was something that a lot of people eat. Yeah, that's The more wealthy people yeah. didn't just eat rice alone. They would have some meat with it or some other vegetables and whatnot. But they would have their their protein and this is one of the reasons why if you talk to to asians even today i remember watching a, a, a asian um television show and they were offered food as a reality show and they didn't see any protein i was like hey, where's the protein right. because it's in their culture now they must have protein because they have a history when there is no protein in the diet you know disease come about All okay right? so beriberi disease is due to a deficiency of vitamin B1. Vitamin right? B1. Now, the images, vitamin B1, which is called thymine. The first name that thymine got was later on in the in 1910, all right? And that is by uh, Yuzumaki Suzuki, right? Mm. Which is, a, he's a, a scientist that he was the one to first isolate it, all right? He was okay. the one to first isolate it. Notice this came probably about 30 years after. Right. Uh, this other doctor uh, found out what was causing the problem, but not the specific um, cause of it. But he did eradicate um, beriberi disease. And, and also that's to show you don't need to know everything to eradicate a disease. He didn't know the exact cause yeah. of it being vitamin B1. All he knew is that they weren't eating right. Now, all when you look at all the symptoms and stuff that beriberi, uh, comes with is a lot that comes together but it's basically due to starvation mm. now today because they have so much of um enriched foods and whatnot berry berries is not a thing that happened today because they have a lot of enriched food so you don't get all these symptoms happening at once but you look at people today and a lot of them have at least one or two of those symptoms and Should the reason why today? that is, is because today, yeah, today a lot of people, a lot of, you talk to people that have pins and needles in their feet. Yeah. Or they might have, or what we might call neuropathy. So mm. you're going to have some sign or symptoms of that. You're going to see people with heart failure. So I have a lot of people with that, with the right. shortness of breath and whatnot, which is uh, dealing with the, the um, right side of the heart failing, mm. right? You have people with edema. So the feet is, is, um, is taking on or, or retaining a lot of water and stuff like that so you have a lot of these uh symptoms popping up here and there among many people and you know people are just being medicated for it but what is actually causing it is the simple fact that many people though they are eating they are still starving you can be full you can have your belly full and still be starving because what you're eating isn't supplying you yeah. with all the nutrients that you need so you can have a full belly and because what you ate is of poor nutritional value you are still starving even though you are not hungry and you are feeling filled right yeah now that is what i try to get people to understand but disease we have made diseases and sickness something that is common among humans when it isn't it's not normal to be sick nobody's supposed to be getting sick i do not get sick i don't even get the cold right but, but and i am the weird one right yeah but, that's but, a bad society just I'm just on the point that you made there with the starvation you could eat but mm -hmm. so so the thing is right like i said i was mm -hmm. saying i will eat a whole plate or a box of chinese food mm -hmm. and within an hour i'll be hungry mm -hmm. but I will eat three eggs. <laughs> Let's have it carefully, yeah? Three or four eggs. Mm -hmm. And be full for a longer period. Yeah, 
correct. Right? Right. And, so, there, and, and, and I've noticed that. that. I have noticed that. This is not me making up anything because you believe in, uh, I mean, you have your, 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 your nutritional approach and that kind of thing. I'm, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. saying it, I'm saying it as, as real as I could say it. I will eat about four eggs, four or five eggs, maybe with some bacon or some, some form of protein. Maybe with um, yeah. minced meat, mm -hmm. burger, um, mm -hmm. burger patties, maybe a steak, whatever the case might be, right? But when I eat yeah. that, I am full. And when I say full, I am full for like hours. If I eat at mm -hmm. 11 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning, i probably not going to feel hungry until about 11 o'clock, 12 in the night. Or 1 o'clock in yeah. the morning. That carries me through the entire day. But I will eat a big right. plate of Chinese food too. With rice, chow mein, chicken, pork, wontons, all kind of thing. And be hungry in an hour. How? Right. And there is a reason for that. You know, I saw somebody, someone in the comments here said that these diseases existed all the time. No, they did not. No, they did not. There was a high influx of beriberi disease in the late 1800s and early 1900s. I think people need to do the research more. And that has to do with the, with the increase of naval activity. So people going out on sea more where they have to pack food to carry. So then you're going and have those that could afford to eat certain things and, and then those that would afford to could only eat the cheaper stuff. And that is why it had an influx of the disease. Because a lot of people speak out of ignorance and I find it a, it'll be a, a bit annoying when people speak on stuff and they have no clue. Right? They just assume all these diseases existed all the time. These diseases existed in areas. For example, look at something simple. Grains. You know, most people don't know that man who created grains it didn't exist before. Lentils and all these wheat and, and barley and all these stuff that people did. These things are not from nature, you know. People assume these things from nature. Now, I have a, I have a one in agri-science, so I know about domestication of stuff, right? right. So, a, a lot of people talk and just assume fruits. Fruits are not natural. Which fruits you, you, you could go out and, and just find just so in nature? Man domesticated fruits, right? The when you say, when you say about domesticated fruits, old. when you say domesticated we fruits, we took something wild that was unedible and selectively bred it and grafted it and, and, and bought it and do all this stuff to it in order to create something that can be consumed. But you see, people don't go and research these things. So we right. just assume, we just okay. assume these things were always there, right? Mm. And that there is a level of of ignorance that the general society has and we think we eat eaten healthy when we aren't right. so somebody wise would say well wrong rice which is unrefined rice have vitamin b it does but brown rice also comes in with phytic acid phytic okay. acid blocks calcium magnesium iron zinc chromium and manganese right you need zinc in order for the human body to produce hydrochloric acid Right? Mm. Because zinc and sodium, sodium um, sodium chloride needs to come together in order to produce hydrochloric acid in one of the main digestive enzymes in the stomach. So when you consume uh brown rice, you're going to block things like zinc, and you also need last week I showed that we need zinc in order to convert um beta carotene retinol into retinolic acid. Right. So you need that in order for the body to have it's vitamin A. Mm. So you need zinc. So when you eat the brown rice now, thinking, all right, well, all I have to do is eat, eat brown rice to get my vitamin B1, you are going to now hinder your body from getting other nutrients. And then you have um, ribo, riboflavin, which is vitamin B2. That comes in attached to albumin. Albumin need hydrochloric acid to separate the B2 from the albumin. So if you're, if you're eating something that blocking zinc, you're going to reduce your hydrochloric acid production and therefore block B2. When you block B2 now, there are other diseases that you're going to suffer from from a B2 deficiency. So everything is, up, so every, again, every, everything is based on somewhat of a domino effect. Exactly. Right. But the general public do not know this because most people do not have an interest in this. We love to eat stuff because it tastes good. When many things we are eating is just sugar and applies to our addiction. No. And people go for their addiction. So when they hear somebody like me now come and speak the truth, truth speakers are not like to know. Truth speakers are not like. Because then I'm telling you that the things that you are addicted to, you could no longer have. So you'll find some way to get, you know, angry with me. The reality is, if you truly want to understand what you're supposed to eat, mm -hmm. that is what Seth Wires Holistic Health Clinic is about. Nice. I re-educate individuals on proper nutrition, what you're supposed to, you don't need to know 
the whole biochemistry of nutrition you don't need to know how your whole metabolic system operates you don't our ancestors didn't right right they didn't they just ate what their system was biologically designed to consume, to consume. and by yeah. doing that that's why we are here today but how we are going today we're not sure if we would be here much longer because mm. we are eating in such a manner that today now we are suffering from over 26,000 diseases and we are quite comfortable with that, which to me is nonsensical. Yeah, yeah. So here I am, somebody that don't get sick, right? And I am the weird looking one because I don't get <laughs> sick. You don't get sick. Right? <laughs> Imagine that. When Kangaroo Jack the other day, when Kangaroo Jack, right? Yeah. Was sick the other day, it was an issue. And what was the first thing people said? Oh, they they're probably not feeding them good at the zoo. Yeah, that was the first thing they're not feeding. Yeah, they're not feeding the kangaroo. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We jump to nutrition, nutrition one time, one but time. when humans get sick, yeah. go take this medication, go take this injection, you have to do this surgery. We don't bother to check nutrition. Yeah, and but, then but, we wonder why we're so sick. Well, Seth, I want to thank you this morning. We don't want past uh, nine past eight. Um, but next week, um, well, I know, I know you're coming up for the run. Yeah, yeah. Because last year you come, eh? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you beat me too. Yeah, boy. Like everybody who yeah, yeah. class, yeah, boy. That was without that was without any former trainer, eh? No trainer. Yeah, I remember that, everybody yeah. would have operated with zero training. <laughs> so I think I think I would um join a gym for, uh -huh. for April month. Yeah. And do a little workout and, and, do and a little workout. Because, because and, and that's the yeah. other thing. I mean I mean if set stand up now and you see set physique. This is set doesn't doesn't set tell them now. You don't you, you don't work out no, four I, or five days that. a week for you know what I mean? That's just well, that's just the natural look, look of, of, of from from how he eats, you know. But yeah, I, asked I went, how he found I went um, to the gym. I went to the gym yesterday, last night, which uh -huh. was my second workout for the year. All right, right workout number two for the year. Second <laughs> workout for the year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but that's serious thing, you know. Anybody who doubt me, yeah. you go buy a, big box, buy a big box of Chinese food, and tell me if you're in hungry within an hour or hour and a half. Before two hours up, your belly grumbling. But go and eat four yeah. eggs and a little piece of steak, and I guarantee so you'll, be, I you'll, you'll, you'll be full for hours. A time I ate a Tuesday, and the next time I felt hungry to eat after that was a Sunday. A Sunday, right? Let me ask yeah. you something there, real quick, real quick here. I don't have much time. Mm -hmm. When you are fasting, right? Mm -hmm. I've heard people said like you know people do intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. Right. So they say if you if you. If you're going to, to more than 18 hours, your mm -hmm. body decides to shed muscle tissue. Well, right, you have something called autophagy that would take place where the body would start to break down things that it would say, you know, mm -hmm. these are not necessary at the moment based on the fact that you're not consuming anything. So yes, the body can end up feeding off of itself. So okay. that can happen. Could that be All a right. topic we so, could talk about um, fasting? Yeah, so we could, we, could, we could talk about that. Fasting is a very nice topic because you can get a lot of healing done during the fasting stages, but it has to be done correctly. Correctly. So what you eat before when you're go, going into the fast and what you consume after the fast mm -hmm. plays some very, very important roles. Well, let, but let's look All at right. that now for Tuesday because fasting, because that's the problem. Mm -hmm. People fast, but when they break their fast, they, they, they tend to eat any and everything. And I know we're in the month yeah. of um, we, we're in the month of Ramadan, and I think um, one of the most disciplined um, groups that I know when it comes to fasting and religion is the Muslim religion. They they they, mm -hmm. they do they do they do mix matters. Um, they fasting, but they 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 they, they, they just really they, they stick to it, but they're real disciplined. I give hats off to them. I, I admire I admire mm -hmm. that religion mm -hmm. for that. But that's a good topic, um, especially with letting people know when you do break fast what the body does need because even with the intermittent yeah, yeah. fasting what they were saying is that if you call, if you break fast um in an intermittent fast and you eat in flour flour going to turn to sugar if you and you know you stay away from you're supposed to eat guess what guess what you're supposed to eat mm -hmm. guess what <laughs> <I'm advising? laughs> yep, the protein is <laughs> that's what i'm telling you right? but step talks a lot man we'll yeah. talk tuesday thanks for having me yeah all man. right so next tuesday cool
All right, so that's it for all about the inside there. And it's true, fasting. Fasting is a, is a real good topic. Um, I think that's a good topic for next week. Um, and I was reading on that, and they say a lot of people say intermittent fast. Boy, that intermittent fast, that'll work. But it's not that it didn't work, you know. It's what you put into your body when you did break the fast. What did you eat, you know? Um, so, things to think about and talk about. Until tomorrow.